If you ask anyone why they play the Java edition of Minecraft, they'll tell you it's because it's better than the Bedrock edition. And if you ask anyone why they play the Bedrock edition, they'll either lie to you or tell you it's because they don't have a PC. But unlike the title of this video suggests, Bedrock Edition is by no means actually a failure. In fact, by looking at Minecraft's older sales figures, we can assume that Minecraft Bedrock is probably around three times more popular than the Java Edition. Much of this comes from the fact that, like I said earlier, only one platform actually has Java Edition. But this is also partly due to the fact that the larger emerging markets of Asia and Africa have billions of residents and comparatively lower incomes, meaning the majority of Minecraft players there play on mobile devices, where Pocket Edition is the only option. Instead, this video is going to be focusing on Minecraft's bedrock failure to capture the PC market, and why Java Edition remains the most popular version of Minecraft and on YouTube as a whole. And to understand this, we have to understand why Minecraft even has two different versions at all. I'll be talking about this entirely from a PC gaming perspective, as a lot of consoles and mobile devices have their own limitations that aren't really the fault of Bedrock Edition. The simple reason is because Java as a programming language needs a special software to run, which cannot be installed onto game consoles, which companies traditionally keep very locked down to prevent piracy and cheating in online games. But the actual story behind the development of Bedrock Edition is a lot more interesting. Bedrock Edition actually started its life as Minecraft Pocket Edition, and was written in the C++ programming language. As unlike Java, this language could be compiled into machine code that didn't need anything extra to work on a machine. The code was also specifically made to be quite versatile as it had to work across a wide range of Android, Windows Phone, and iOS devices. Unlike the existing console editions, which were made in the same language, but were more specifically tailored towards their specific console. This version of Minecraft continued development as normal until its release on December 19, 2016. However, sometime between development starting in 2010 and releasing in 2016, Microsoft had acquired Mojang and started to have big ideas for the big game they just spent billions of dollars on. They wanted to connect their Windows 10 players, Xbox players, and Windows Phone players, yes, Windows Phone was still around back then, into one game with crossplay. And there was no reason they couldn't do that, as Microsoft owned all of the platforms as well as the game. But why stop at their own platforms when they could at least try to connect everyone playing on every platform? And that is what they did, releasing the Better Together update for Windows 10 on September 20th, 2017. Gear VR, Amazon Fire TV, and also releasing the new Minecraft Bedrock Edition for Xbox One. The update was also submitted to Sony for the PlayStation and Nintendo for the Switch, but neither were too eager to implement crossplay and wouldn't allow the Bedrock Edition onto their platforms. This update also made it abundantly clear that there was at least some hope that this huge update to Bedrock Edition with all of its unique features would encourage PC players to use the new Windows 10 edition as the Bedrock Edition was renamed to simply just Minecraft and the original PC version being given the slightly more unofficial sounding name of Minecraft Java Edition. This was also alongside a campaign by Microsoft that had been ongoing for two years that anybody who owned a Minecraft Java Edition account could receive a free copy of Windows 10 Edition just by logging in. However, we're sitting here five years later after the release of this update with the YouTube space firmly being dominated by the Java Edition of Minecraft and the vast majority of Minecraft players who were already playing the Java Edition, still playing Java Edition, even more so than they used to. Which raises the question, what was actually so bad about the Bedrock Edition that Java Edition players just didn't want to play at all? For every good thing I can say about the Bedrock Edition, there are about three bad things I can say come with it. I personally have about 200 hours in the Bedrock Edition, 
mostly from playing with friends who use Xbox One. But I also have something like 4000 hours in the Java edition, so I know my way around pretty well. Because I like watch time, I'm first going to tell you about the things I actually like about Bedrock Edition, because I assume that my audience is largely from Java Edition players who have most likely never played the Bedrock Edition before, and to give people a totally skewed perspective wouldn't really be doing Bedrock justice. I think the biggest and best thing about the Bedrock Edition is how the code is just objectively better. Bedrock's code is designed with multiple CPU cores in mind, which has long played the Java Edition in recent years. Here I am on Bedrock Edition with a 40 chunk render distance, flying around generating new chunks at 60 FPS. And here I am on the Java Edition, on 32 render distance, doing the same thing, running at a frame rate lower than Apex Legends gets on the Steam Deck on match settings. Bedrock Edition also has built-in modding support with simple installation. Servers and worlds can have mods installed in add-ons, which just work with Minecraft. This used to be a terrible system, but in recent years has become much more powerful and easy to use. And the ability to automatically install these or add worlds, at least on Windows 10, by just opening a file is extremely useful. Redstone has a fair amount more usable features, such as allowing redstone signals to travel down through glass, having redstone be easier by connecting directly to pistons, and by having redstone be directly able to connect to pistons or be on top of them, as well as pistons being able to move containers like chests, all of which are not possibilities on the Java edition. And that's where all of the praise ends, and the criticism begins. Because wow, Bedrock just does not feel like the same game. For starters, let's talk about parity issues. The most recent update brought nearly full parity between both versions of the game, right up to the seed level. If you generate the same world across both games, you get almost the same experience, with a few differences, but that isn't going to break the gameplay experience. Instead, a lack of parity is felt within the world generation itself. Java Edition worlds generally have a feeling of more in them. The forests are denser, there's more grass everywhere, more random caves around the surface, a lot of things to explore. Bedrock, on the other hand, has some unusual new generations, like these random dead trees in forests or the fact that strongholds almost always generate on their villages. There's an almost washed out appearance to everything, and the distant unloaded chunks have a white fog that creeps way beyond what it feels like it should. And these are just issues with the world generation. Arguably, the biggest parity issue is the combat, which makes up so much of what Minecraft survival is. Love it or hate it, Minecraft's 1.9 combat system works really well for single player experiences, offering somewhat varied combat and a requirement to time attacks to deal full damage. This isn't a thing on Bedrock Edition. It uses some bizarre hybrid system between the 1.8 and 1.9 combat system. Having no long attack cooldown between attacks so spam clicking is still on the table, but still having a strict short cooldown between being able to attack again if you miss an attack, and also having a shield which can only be activated by crouching? This is not fun to PvP with, and is also completely bland when fighting enemies in survival mode. A big issue that played Bedrock's hopes of encapsulating the Java audience back in 2018 still remains to this day too. There is no cross-compatibility between the two versions. Anything players has made in the Java edition could not be transferred forward onto the Bedrock edition, including their worlds or Minecraft servers like Mineplex, The Hive, and Hypixel, which either had to entirely remake their servers from nothing whilst maintaining two separate code bases, abandoning their Java edition platforms, or just not make the jump over to the Bedrock Edition at all, although I'll talk more about those servers later. Part of the reason for this early lack of compatibility was that at the time of release, Bedrock Edition had only just added 1.9's end update content, 
and the Java edition was already ahead on version 1.11, so there was really no reason anyone would give up all the new features unless they really had to. Parity isn't the only issue played in Bedrock Edition. If you've ever wanted to play multiplayer on Bedrock Edition, you know your options are limited, to say the least. To its credit, you can easily start up a multiplayer world and invite anyone on your friends list to play with you. And if that's all you're here for, then this is the perfect multiplayer experience. However, if you want something more like a world that stays online when the host isn't online, the only way you can do this is through purchasing a Realm subscription, which costs $4 a month for a 2-player server or $8 a month for a 10-player server. If you and your friends play only on Windows 10 and Pocket Editions, there is the option to set up your own server for free just like the Java Edition. But even this isn't practical, as if any of your friends plays on a console, there is no option to join custom server IPs at all without literally changing the DNS settings on the console, and even that doesn't work half of the time. This approach to multiplayer is massively different to the Java Edition, which has a thriving multiplayer community, full of hundreds of popular servers, including the most popular which most of my viewers are probably from, Hypixel. Sure, most of these servers are terrible pay-to-win prison or survival servers, but the fact that these actually exist is more than what can be said about Bedrock servers. There's also a certain charm to the Java servers, in how they are basically held together by a bunch of plugins, which may not create the most polished experience, but there's just something iconic about using chest inventories as GUIs that I never want to get away from. On the contrary, Bedrock servers are actually given a fair amount to work with, and to Microsoft's credit, this is a good thing. Servers can automatically install add-ons, including slight modded content and resource packs, directly upon joining, and also give server owners some really neat tools, including the ability to create actual GUI menus. However, and this is entirely my own opinion, but this feels really bland and uninspired. Every single server uses these features, and they all just kinda feel the same. Really bland and uninspired. These tools also allow creators to make, um, this. I don't know who thought putting models with different pixel sizes and voxels into Minecraft was a good idea, but they really made the game feel really overproduced. As for the content on the seven Microsoft-approved servers, none of them are particularly special. They all have your usual Minecraft game modes, but with all the added bad stuff that comes from Bedrock Edition. To put things into perspective, I'm playing on a Bedrock server which is literally a copy of Hypixel's game modes, and I'm no PvP nut, but I know what PvP should feel like, and this just isn't it. There's barely any knockback, you die really quickly, and the reach on Bedrock Edition is actually slightly higher than what I'm used to on Java Edition, all of which makes a miserable experience for anyone used to Java. But I guess Microsoft doesn't really care because these aren't the games that make them any money. Up until this point, I've avoided talking about the worst part of Bedrock Edition, and that has to be mine coins, and you probably agree. It makes Minecraft feel so much more like a mobile game being played on PC. And while some mobile games are fun on PC, this is not an example of that. The idea of mine coins is great. Microsoft sells players mine coins, and then those players can spend those mine coins on user-generated content, and the developers of that content get a nice share of the profits. It's kinda like Roblox system, but without stealing a 77% cut and using that money to cover up for pedos. Apparently, developers of content on the marketplace get themselves a 70% cut, which is great, and many people can make a living from this, with apparently $350 million being paid out as of April 2021. So why don't I like this? The simple answer is, the Minecraft marketplace is not open to everyone. In fact, nobody can upload to the marketplace at all without becoming a Minecraft store partner, which requires a long application process and an entire team of developers. Some of these teams make really really good content, like Notstrue, the creators of MCC. 
but the vast, vast majority of creators on the marketplace made some of the worst content ever. If the requirement to be a Microsoft partner to upload to the store is there for quality control, it is absolutely not working. So much of the store is taken up by $2 skin packs, much of these making use of artwork from skins not actually made by the creators, and that, at least on Windows 10 edition, can be added for free anyway by just uploading the skin. The skin system is another major complaint I have about Bedrock, but much of this comes from how locked down consoles are, so I'll just skip over this for now. Anyway, back to the marketplace. Where there aren't $2 crappy skins, there are $10 Minecraft worlds that quite literally do nothing, and a whole range of low quality content. And between those two extremes, there can actually be some decent quality stuff. However, what annoys me most is how little the marketplace actually makes use of the positive features of Bedrock. Remember the one-click mod support and how worlds can just have mods or add-ons behavior packs depending on where you look? Well, nowhere in the marketplace can you actually make use of add-ons, and this actually creates quite a lot of confusion. At first a glance from looking at the marketplace, it looks like there's all sorts of cool mods like this one called Armor Expansion 2. Now, you'd expect from looking at this that when you buy this, you gain access to the mod and you can use it. This is not how it works. To demonstrate this, I actually bought this myself to showcase how this works. Basically, by buying this, you only get access to the ability to create a world. And that's it. The world is whatever the developer made, and you have to play with it. You don't actually get access to the behavior pack anywhere, and you cannot use it when creating a normal world. This is not necessarily the developer's fault either, this is an issue with the marketplace store. That being said, however, this one actually happened to suck. If there is supposed to be quality control here, there wasn't any, as many of the signs are full of grammatical errors and the content doesn't actually work. For instance, if I create an armor set and its pieces, they don't work and I have to craft them into something combined, which I can still only put on by right-clicking on the item. This is as much a fault as the limitations of Minecraft's behavior packs as it is the developers, but I don't know enough about that to talk about them. This isn't cherry-picked either. I get the same experience with any world I buy and play, and I just picked this one out at random. Overall, I feel as if Bedrock Edition has amazing potential. The newer codebase alone really shows in how much better the engine performs, and ray tracing is always going to be a nice touch too. And if it weren't for everything I mentioned today, I think we would all be happily playing Bedrock Edition, and the development of Java would have stopped. But that isn't the case, and Mojang continues to support two separate code bases because of the sheer amount of people who still keep playing Java. I really hope that any Mojang employees watching this take some notes, and I hope that everyone else watching this leaves some comments about their own dislikes of Bedrock Edition. Maybe we can make it better. Anyways, if you watched this video till the end, then you might as well subscribe and leave a like. What other topic do you want us to go in depth for and cover? Let us know in the comments. See ya, have a nice day.